we have oh this really cool really good article actually a really insightful article by um philip what was it phil the Debr- phil brown is that his, his name is phil brown from twitter uh a really prominent journalist um Irish journalist that lives, I think, in the States now, a big United supporter who kind of consistently putting out a lot of good information, providing a lot of behind the scenes info on what's going on, transfer rumors, all that good stuff. And he, like a lot of fans, like myself, is kind of, you know, we've resigned ourselves to accepting that United is no longer the force that we once were. <clears throat> we're run by people, the Glazers, who are essentially looking at United as a cash cow. They're not looking at it as a place to win trophies in order to kind of boost their cash cow. They're essentially, you know, riddling us with debt and taking out copious amounts of money and just having United be part of their portfolio, but not doing anything to make us competitive on the football pitch. And if you look at what City are doing, if you look at what Arsenal have done, if you look at Tottenham, what they're trying to do with their stadium and their training facilities, and then you look at what we're doing as a club and we've made no signings. We don't look like we're linked with people. We probably need about three minimum signings, if not five, um, to go into our first team squad or first or, or even our first team to replace some people who are probably dead wood or to probably put a fire up somebody's asses and kind of get them performing a little bit better. Nothing's happening. Zero. You don't hear anything. They spent most of their time trying to go after Jaden Sancho in a deal that I think isn't probably going to happen. I think it's going to be one of those deals that eventually the club gets bored of trying to negotiate with United and they soon realise that we're not going to pay the asking price because we don't have the money. That's why we're probably offering instalments. And then they're going to pass and then next season someone's going to slap him up. You know it's going to happen. You just know it. So um, Phil had enough and wrote this really great op-ed that oddly enough got a reaction from United. United actually replied off the back of this op-ed that he wrote, which was pretty scathing of the regime of what they've done. Pretty scathing of Ed Woodward, who's probably, you know, one of the, the worst, if not the worst, if not, has to be one of the worst chief executives in football. Has to be. Um, hasn't got a clue. Former accountant or financier that now pretends to play football agent, manager, director. Hasn't got the scoobius of idea what he's doing. And has been a person who has somehow, even though managers at United get sacked, even though players get hounded out, he seems to be the only person that's impervious to any kind of punishment of getting let go. He's overseen five failed managers and there's not been any inkling that he's ever, his position is ever going to be in jeopardy. We've got no football director. We've got no... Um, football people in higher positions um, of power or influence in the squad or in a team or in an organization and here we are but it says phil's um, article it says manchester is being destroyed from within it says um, since 2012 it has been an unmitigating disaster everything that's great about united happened prior to his tenure since then they've gone from one calamity to the next and people responsible for those calamities have even ha, have haven't even once hinted they'll hold themselves accountable instead they appoint new manager after new manager giving the illusion of change when it's nothing more than optical illusion it's truly unfathomable that edward and his stars could inherit a football club in the condition that they did and proceed to run it into the ground and leave it in a position where we have to go back to the 70s to find the last time united it finished this far behind the leaders no other football club in the world would tolerate this level of ineptitude take a look at Bayern Munich a football club run by football people who are who make football decisions because they know why they're making them everything at the club is synchronized the academy players the academy plays in the image of the first team and by the time the they need they reach maturity they can be surgically brought in to the youth team to play in the first team so it continues going on about some of the failings I think the last paragraph here is really good <coughs> the last two it says the following the new season is four weeks away the only thing united managed to do is move players on from the squad that was razor thin in the first place the first half of last season 100 percent down to the club not signing the players it needs to fulfill the primary objective win football games the men who fill those suits and who are responsible for running this club are almost offended when they are criticized at all they won't feel responsible for leaving the club short in the summer and they certainly won't do so in the same this season Solskjaer got them out of jail. He saved every single one of them. They owe him, yet they behave like the opposite is true. Every year, the highlight clips get older. The people of the present are uh, forced to bask in the glory of the era they had nothing to do with. As Chelsea move closer to signing Kai Havertz, the imposters who run this football club will shamelessly sit on their hands. Last paragraph, it says they will, f- they will think nothing of starting the season a month from now with the squad exactly as it is. <clears throat> as United is, um, sorry, at United, there's always money 
as you know, there's always money for everything but football. There's always money for dividends, always money for massive executive bonuses, always enough to cover the mistakes of people who do not who do not have once demonstrated that um, they possess the capabilities to run the football club. I pray against all hope that the magic wand is waved, competition is found, and social is given the players that he asks for. But history is the greatest predictor of the future, and it's just otherwise. Many United fans will react with anger, uh, then apathy at another disappointing summer. But the inevitable failures happen next season. People, please direct your anger beyond the manager, which is true. And again, it's I've resigned myself to it. I think I came to that realization pretty soon. Maybe my kind of breaking point was when we sold Ronaldo. I think that summer, Ronaldo and Tevez, and we brought in. I'm gonna say Antonio Valencia, Michael Owen, and maybe Obertown was the same window. That's when I lost some of my hope. And then I remember that's when Michael Owen got the number seven. Fair enough, Michael Owen went on and underscored that winner against City. Cool, great. He had a couple of other good games and he's in, you know, he just made that paper and it? it's not his fault. But letting go of Carlos Tevens or Cristiano Ronaldo and then bringing in those three players, Obertan, um, Tony Valencia and Michael Owen really was a signal of how far we'd fallen. Obviously, um, bloody, you know, Sir Ferguson, a genius, ended up winning us a title, I think, after that, see, after those signings too and a few other trophies. But, that was mostly his genius. The moment he stepped away from the club, the whole cards came tumbling down and we don't have any way, there's, and there's not been any inkling so far that they were going to fix it. We, we looked at one option, which was maybe getting a football director in, right, who would essentially come in and, you know, you'd hope that that one person would find all the other gaps that exist in the club and try and modernise it, right, try and kind of bring it dragging and screaming to the uh, 21st century. But that didn't happen because guess what? The people that are in charge now who have cushy jobs doing nothing and compiling reports on players will never sign. They don't want to be put in a position where a football director comes in and starts questioning their position or eventually ends up firing them or eventually takes away positions of power and influence away from them. And that's actually what's happening. Or even something like Ed Woodard who kind of acts as if like he's got any kind of football acumen and so far he's demonstrated none whatsoever. He should be somebody that's falling on his sword, but he hasn't. Instead, he points a finger at managers, uh, points a finger at players. You get you get fed, you know, they kind of leak stories about certain players, a lack of performance and effort and desire. When really, if you look at it, the recruitment of that club, of this club that I support, the objectives that we have have been completely against everything that we stand for. And now look at Vishnu we're in. So that's why I don't really get angry because I resign myself to it. I know that this will continue on um, and it will only stop or only end when the Glazers leave. When the Glazers are brought out of the club or eventually end up selling out, um, this is the only way it's going to change. It won't change before that. It's not going to change. It won't change. You won't see our fortunes change whatsoever. We won't win another Champions League. No, let's not get that straight. We won't be the force that we were prior until those guys leave. We might win a cup here and there because it's a cup competition. I can't say we never win a Champions League. But in terms of being an actual, you know, competing, dominating force in the Premier League like we were prior, you know, where third was a, third was might as well be relegation i don't think we'll be there again until the glazers leave it's just a really shocking set, uh, set of events and um as they are united nowadays because they don't like to be embarrassed in public they decided to reply to phil with one of the most wishy-washy empty replies i've ever seen in my life this kind of reminds me a lot of the replies and the comments you'd get back from working in certain startups right i worked in one particular startup with this you know absolute dickhead of a guy called nicholas oliver who ended up scamming everybody in the company and not paying them any money and you know running off with um loads of investment from people that he didn't pay back and racking up massive amounts of debts and he had a really great talent of kind of saying a lot of words without saying anything right it's a really particular skill that you kind of acquire once you start running a startup you have to have the ability to kind of sell people dreams and kind of dangle the carrot in front of their face right without actually committing to anything and i guess this is essentially what united have done with this statement that they released to feel um kind of addressing some of the concerns that he put in his statement which you know in his article which is pretty clear and damning about what he thinks who the uh, who the blame should be where the blame should be laid um if that does get dished out in the season so this is united replying right look at us replying absolute joke of a club it says here in response to my article on the btpmedia.net title Manchester united are being destroyed from within the club has since emailed me to state their position and to make it clear i appreciate the willingness of the club to engage and dialogue and issue a response so here's their response Manchester united has been consistent in this position regarding recruitment since the start of the COVID crisis so what no one knows your position because we don't have any... It's as if they're going on as if like we have some sort of like defined football identity. The thing that they're kind of pinning their hopes on now at the moment is fucking um what? 
uh, Brexit FC, right? This idea that we've kind of doing a cultural reset by not signing any flamboyant foreign players, which is already questionable, right? Anyone that's not European based or British for the most part, um, that doesn't color their hair in a weird way or wear wacky clothes outside of football, that's the players that we're trying to sign, right? That's what it looks like. Questionable, but I get it. Fair enough. Do your thing. <clears throat> but it's not mind blowing. It's not that forward thinking. It's not going to close the gap on the champions. It is what it is. It's a sensible buying decision, but it's not anything to shout home about. It continues. It says the club points out that it may it remains committed to supporting the manager and strengthening the squad over the long term. What does that mean? It means that we're not going to sign the people that you want now. We're going to drip feed the signings because we don't want to get them wrong and be hamstrung with six or seven signings that are error prone and then go and sign a new manager. Or they just can't get that business done. Because top teams are doing it. Inter Milan did it in one summer. Chelsea are in the process of maybe signing their fourth player already. Top teams can do it because there's no time to waste. Football waits for no man. It continues. The club also points out that this summer's transfer window will not be business as usual because of the huge economic impact of the pandemic. Tell that to Chelsea. Tell that to Real Madrid. Tell that to PSG. Tell that to, tell that to Liverpool. Tell that to Arsenal even. What are you talking about? Because of the huge economic pand uh, impact from the pandemic, both in terms of immediate loss of revenue and then the uncertainty over the long-term impact of the crisis, of course. So that means if we sign... So, so I, I said before, if we sign Sancho, that's our lot. If we don't sign Sancho, we're going to sign two players. I've said it before. If we don't sign Sancho, we're going to sign two players and that's going to be it. And they're going to be two very underwhelming players. They won't even be the Grealishes. They'll be somebody else super shit like a Brooks or something that's not, you know, it's, it might be a good squad player, injury-prone youngster, but he's not going to get us next to, he's not going to get us competing with PSG and Bayern Munich. It's not going to happen. So just resign yourself to if you're a United fan. And then thirdly, um, what's here? Da, 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 da. United point, United's point of view is that these harsh economic realities means the club must be cautious this summer to ensure the club preserves the strength throughout this difficult period. What does that even mean? Co like, what does it mean? The new season starts in a few weeks. In September, I think, right? Like, what is this? What are you talking about? There is no time. We're essentially playing two seasons in like two years. Or in one year, sorry, right? One and a bit years. You have to just get your business done sooner rather than quickly, sooner rather than later. So you can make a long-term decision as to whether you're going to stick to those players or not. Look at City. They buy a couple of right-backs they don't like. They sell them and sign a couple of more sometimes valued even more than the ones that they previously signed. Like, ugh, we're a joke of a club. Absolute mess. But again, it's no surprise. This is always, always going to be on the cards. The moment the Glazers rocked up at United, that was when my club died. And until that ends, until that changes, we're not going to be a uh, competing force in world football ever again. We might win the old cup here and there, but to get back where we were, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But yeah, what can you do? What can you do? No point again. I'm upset about that because I can't do it. The only thing I can do is just not buy anything from the club. I don't buy any replica jerseys. Um, I don't buy any other bits of merch from them. I don't give them any more money than I have to get give them. I don't want to give them anything because I don't feel that infused by what's going on. The direction of the club is... There is no direction. It's rudderless. We're essentially hoping that Solskjaer just gets it right on his own, in his own way. If he gets it right, it's going to be... It's to no benefit and it's to no credit to the board at all or to the club as it's to the people in the head office. They've got nothing. They've got no, they should have no sense of uh, achievement or accomplishment in that whatsoever because it'd just be all down to him. It'd be all down to Soul Shark, man, man, managing the squad well, managing his fitness well, managing expectations, signing well based on the recommendations he gets from maybe friends in football or people within the club. But it won't be anything to do with the United board, nothing whatsoever. Absolutely shocking, man. Absolutely shocking. But what can you do?